As you're no doubt aware at this point, the iconic work of J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings, is being, in my opinion, desecrated at present with the horrendous Rings of Power series from Amazon and those of us who have expressed our valid concerns and criticisms and why we do not appreciate this new version of The Lord of the Rings have been dismissed as racist. AVClub.com had this article recently, Rings of Power showrunner J.D. Payne addresses patently evil racist backlash. It's very hard for us to understand, says Rings of Power co-creator J.D. Payne, of some of the show's virulently racist criticism. What are they protecting? I don't know, maybe the legacy of a brilliant and extraordinarily talented writer who you can't hold a candle to or ever hope to emulate, and who is not alive anymore and therefore couldn't prevent his work from falling into the wrong hands. Sort of ironic, isn't it, considering the story of The Lord of the Rings is about trying to keep something extremely powerful from, you know, falling into the wrong hands. Ultimately, audience complaints about Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power have fallen into two categories. The first is the diverse casting of established Middle-earth races that are actually based upon Celtic, Gaelic and Germanic folklore and ancient European mythology, and considering the books were written by Tolkien between 1937 and 1949, at a time when Britain was entirely demographically homogenous, I think it's fair to say that all audiences are asking for is historic and contextual accuracy in the depiction of the characters and the world that Tolkien created. So it's obvious that the reason for the diversity casting is driven by current year politics. The second complaint is perhaps more damning. The writing is just bad, the characters are not interesting, and the protagonist is deeply unlikable, thin-skinned, and, in my opinion, downright psychotic. And even if it takes me all of this age, I vow to eradicate every last one of you. But you shall be kept alive, so that one day, Before I drive my dagger into your poisoned heart, I will whisper in your piked ear that all your offspring are dead and the scourge of your kind ends with you. Uh Uh-huh, such a nice lady. Anyway, it's clear that there's just zero attempt here at keeping in line with the books and the original depiction of Galadriel. This is a desecration of the character. Or are you a castaway, grasping for a handhold in a tempest? There is a tempest in me. It swept me to this island for a reason. (laughs) Oh, cringe. How are we supposed to be endeared to this character? She's supposed to be the main focus of the series. We're supposed to be intrigued by her journey and her development. She's sullen, cold, abrasive, filled with anger... She's hostile and extremely self-assured to the point of being arrogant. That would be the Mary Sue effect, of course. But regardless, she's one-dimensional. And for all the character flaws I've mentioned, it makes it difficult for the audience to relate to her or even want to watch any scenes with her in them. And that's a very damning thing to say about the lead character of a TV series. And of course my detractors will defend this crappy series and this horrendous character by saying, I'm just a misogynist who doesn't like a strong female character in a lead role. Which is such a complete and utter cop-out response, because you can always hide behind that kind of excuse for bad writing. Our critics who defend this rubbish like to deliberately misrepresent our views in order to deflect criticism with accusations of sexism, or in some cases, as I've mentioned, racism, whatever the excuse of the day is, I suppose. The decline in the quality of entertainment these days, especially well-known pop culture franchises, is being made possible by the fact that the people writing and producing for them, in my opinion, lack the sufficient talent and creative ability required to produce an entertaining product to the standard that audiences once expected. To make matters worse, some people are making excuses for the mediocrity of the product, who would rather claim that the negative audience reception has nothing to do with the quality of the content of the product, but is in fact a fundamental failing of the audience. Calling critics of the product racist or sexist or whatever just smacks of a kind of elitist snobbery to me, where audiences are being talked down to and being told that their objections and criticisms are invalid because they are just too close-minded, 
unsophisticated, anachronistic or unintelligent to appreciate the artistic masterpiece on display. But ultimately, pride always comes before a fall, and I believe there will come a time soon when studios will be forced to shift gears and begin to once again produce films and television shows that have broad and universal appeal, and that don't alienate a significant subsection of the potential audience base. Dear Hollywood, if you want us to stop complaining about how awful we believe your productions are, then simply stop producing rubbish. It seems at present some people have forgotten that the customer is always right. Shaming, blaming and name-calling a section of the audience will not convince them to come back and watch your show. You will lose that audience member forever, and your industry is all about numbers, so you might want to try and keep as many audience members on board as possible. Only a fool would write off such vocal negative criticism as the rantings of a tiny, bigoted, and insignificant group. 